And yes, the decision has been made. This gets a 3.6 liter engine, stage two, DQ250 transmission. I love the way the VR6 engines sound when they have exhaust. Those things sound like a beast. I have to have one that's just cruising, whether it's front wheel drive, all wheel drive. I know it's gonna blow the tires off, but it's like it's nothing. But that will be my tack on the front wheel drive market as well. I'll use a four cylinder to beat up on the boys a little bit or just to compete with them. And then I'll use the VR6 just to crush the competition as far as the front wheel drive class. So this may eventually transition to a race car, or if not, I'll keep it on the street for data logging, getting and gathering information for VR6 builds and just continue and just buy another car and use that for the track. But either way, this is going to get a 3.6 liter VR6 stage two. Preparing to order some miscellaneous hardware for our engine mounts. So for example, if Teddy needs 10 bolts for his car and I need 10 bolts for my car, that's 20 bolts. 20 bolts at 61 cent each will cost us $12.20. But I might as well order 25 because if you order 25, five more bolts, then you get the bolts for 44 cent each and it's only $11 saving us a dollar and 20 cent. So sometimes it's better to order the extra bolts, which are in bulk, so that we can get a cheaper rate. And these are the grade 12.9 hardware bolts that we will need for the transmission mounts and the engine mount, mounting the engine to the engine block and just different miscellaneous bolts that goes around and secure different hardware on the engine. And that's getting rid of the original factory grade 8.8 .8 hardware. So I made another discovery along with the transfer case. The starter from the DQ250 transmission will not properly bolt up to a DQ500. So a lot of this information unfortunately we don't have and it's not like there's a playbook that we've come across that says if you do a conversion or retrofit like this, these are all the pieces you'll need. You'll need certain axles, you'll need a starter, you'll need a whole lot of this stuff because some of the guys that have been doing swaps, their cars already had DQ250s, and like my Laka Motorsport, they upgraded to a VR6 engine with their original style chassis, axles, and everything to match up, starter and everything. So they didn't have to go through a lot of the extra groundwork that we're having to go through. So unfortunately, this is a learning process because not many people are, are have done this particular style build yet that we know of over here and if so they are not providing information that we would need to make things easier that's why some of the parts that Malacca already bought for example as far as a radiator or different bolts and stuff like that for the harmonic damper and different things like that it's good that they've already did some groundwork therefore that'll save us expense so sometimes trying to be first isn't necessarily always best because you will have to do a lot of development, a lot of research and spending. So for example, parts that I was researching as far as getting custom made cranks for this engine, you have to pay for setup time, all the measuring, all the information and tooling and expense that it will cost a manufacturer just to machine and cut that crank. And then some of them have a minimum of 10 requirements in order to build that that's a fortune that would be at least 30 or forty thousand dollars that we don't even want to start off with that kind so a lot of the research and development as i stated before being the first can be extremely expensive other people that have built it as far as like the the gear set for the dq50 i discovered that uh don octane and donkey tech they've already came across or had machine gears built already for the DQ500 transmission. So we have to source that down 
and order those gear sets for this as well because the transmission is going to blow apart if they're busting these transmissions apart with a five cylinder that does not make the torque nearly as these vr6 engines make we're going to blow the transmission case apart and then we're throwing away even more money so we have to definitely be smart we have to do the research development and have the parts available also to research what we need to take it to the next step all the stuff that we had and received i've come across better hardware for the oil pan better hardware for the girdles i'm correcting different things that a lot of the stuff that we were re um, that was sent grade 12 bolts 12.9 bolts that's going to different parts of the engine i had another shipment of bolts that came in for all of the motor mounts so that way i can upgrade all of these to 12.8 so we're making progress when we get these parts but the difficult part is getting this stuff in hand happy to say we received the hardware in for our tt build so i ordered some more bolts because now that we have the engine bolted in the car we see that some of the motor mount bolts are uh i would say a slightly less great far less which is 8.8 .8 and some of it is 10.9 so i ordered all great 12.9 hardware for our starters for the transmission mounts and for the engine mounts itself so just for the transmission mounts for example you need the three larger bolts which is like m12 and it's a fine pitch 1.5 then we need four smaller bolts that secure the 034 motor mount we needed as well as on the passenger side we need the two large m12 bolts for that as well as I think it's like three or four miscellaneous bolts that secure the brackets to the block so i doubled up on all the bolts so that way we have bolts for teddy's tt build as well as mine so i'm glad to see we got the hardware in okay this servo is so massive the compressor housing is so huge that's why guys that's running the big boy turbos don't have any choice but to squeeze it over here I didn't try it every which way to see if this thing would fit behind this engine and I don't even have the transfer case on that would take all of the space up right in this location here. So for proper clearance this is going to have to be a sidewinder because it's so huge. So for example I'm going to come off of here with a 90 bridge that into the exhaust pipe outlets this huge pipe is so huge this is going to have to come over and snorkel down to go up through the tunnel just to connect to the exhaust and remember the prop shaft is going through there as well so running big boy turbos like this this is why they run a scoop and then shoot this thing a 90 straight up through the hood because it is so big trying to get the proper exhaust piping is extremely tedious but i can squeeze it in there i know i can make it work but it's going to be extremely tight and to be able to still get the hood to come down and have clearance like that so we like we got maybe two inches from the hood to try to make this work without cutting the hole through the hood this would be the best and proper location that we would have to do other than that everybody else is going through the hood but i definitely got to get a tight 90 coming off of here and staying somewhat below here where we have the seal in order to make a, t a turn and get this to bridge over here and that means also all of this these coolant lines and everything is going to have to be repositioned of course because if you have this much heat i've seen many people melt all of this up just from the head is turning red hot all of this melt up we're talking of hundreds and hundreds of degrees and all plastic when i first did my gti everything melted up i even had a wire harness on the other side of the firewall and it literally melted just from the heat of it so we're going to, have to definitely wrap all of these pretty good 
and definitely get a lot of heat shielding to protect whatever piping we have and electrical wiring and coolant lines yes this is a very tight squeeze but it's a possibility we may be able to get this in an engine compartment without having to cut through the hood like most of the people running large turbos like this so because of the notches already in the hood I may be able to come off of this pipe back here in the back with a 90 and if I come up there with a 90 I can loop it up up over here and the hood has already got a notch in it right behind the cross member and go over to my left and connect with the exhaust manifold and then that'll still leave us with some extra clearance now I may still have to elevate this up higher because I only have the turbos propped up down here and just in case when I run my plate and anything hopefully all this is clear but all of this is going to be tight but I still do have a good two and a half inches like two inches from the roof or the hood of the car so I can still probably position this up a little bit higher or angle it if I had to tilt the front up a little bit and let the back tip down but this is with the hood positioned in a close so back up as I was stating I can probably come off of here with a 90 and run this over to connect to my pipe work for the exhaust manifold and then still have provisions for a straight we we'll have to run a remote reservoir because the heat coming off of this pipe right here would melt everything I looked at some pictures of MTech and other people that's got a turbo and they their car is right hand drive they don't have this brake booster or anything here so he was able to run his turbo a little bit tighter in his corner closer towards the shock well but it was tighter in the corner but he still had to cut a large hole in his hood because the compressor housing is so large. And the thing is, that's in a golf that has more of a square hood. The front of the TTs is rounded off more, more aerodynamic. So with this sloped nose, our car is more aerodynamic and not boxy like a golf. So that helps because the front of that golf is pretty much chopped off, squared off. And with this longer nose, that gives us a little extra room to kind of squeeze this thing into the engine compartment. So I'm gonna try to work some magic this weekend and see where I can get. Out here getting a little jazzy. The transfer case came from Australia for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and bolt the transfer case to the transmission and start connecting the wiring harness. So that way we can get most of the wiring already connected out of the way. And then the next step would be start the plan for the turbo exhaust manifold fitting. The transfer case for the UQ500 transmission showed up a few hours ago. So I'm going to install the transfer case first and then prepare to install the wiring. That way we'll have most of the wiring out the way and pretty much connected. And then I can prepare to fabricate the plumbing for my exhaust manifold. Let's do it. Yeah, I have the transfer case just about unpackaged. The only thing I don't like is all the styrofoam flakes that's blowing around. This should have at least been wrapped in plastic and then maybe encased in a styrofoam. So that way none of the styrofoam gets into any ports to clog anything up. So for example, all that styrofoam that's up in there, that is not good at all. And we do not want anything like that getting caught up into the transmission case and clogging up any type of ports. Okay, use my blowgun to intensely try to remove any of the debris from the styrofoam. There was literally styrofoam debris that was smashed up in between each one of the splines on both sides. So I had to rotate the splines around, get all of that smashed up styrofoam from out of both sides and now I'm going to bolt it up to the transmission